Everyman Driver Nation, welcome back to the Riverside State Park ORV area here in North Spokane, Washington. With me is a 2016 Hyundai Tucson in this lovely Caribbean blue color, which comes in four trim levels, SE, Eco, Sport, and Limited, each available in front wheel or all wheel drive. We have the Limited in the all wheel drive, obviously, and that's why we're here today to do some light duty, off-roading and tell you more about the vehicle. So let's get started. It's a compact crossover. All right, let the adventure begin. Go through a mud puddle, why not? We're starting to have some sprinkles out here, which is good. Maybe it'll give us a little bit of more, a little more mud, something like that. Hey, I love going down these initial descents because I can tell you about um, the ground clearance. This has 6.4 inches. That's, uh, you know, still 0.3 more than our Mazda CX-5 from last week, but still far below some of the, the big players like the Jeep Cherokee or the Subaru Outback, which are in the eight and a half range, eight and a half inches of ground clearance, but still we're good here. Uh, this vehicle, by the way, has an all wheel drive system which is uh, includes driver selectable all-wheel drive lock and we're going to go as is right now until we may need it or whatever so i'm going to go for probably three different sections we go up we'll go down and we'll go up probably the gauntlet and whatever else tickles our fancy not a lot of people out today i did see some motorcycles I'm just double checking my cameras all right we're good and I may have to double check again just because we might have some uh, raindrops on the lenses. Okay, two engine options on the Tucson. By the way, stay to the very end. Melissa will be joining me for uh, a driving impressions and overall cabin feel. I'll put that at the end of the video, something we did earlier. So if you want to see that, I'll put that at the end. So two engine options. And I did do the sport version of this vehicle uh, about three months ago. And that was, an all that was a front wheel drive. So in the video I said, no, we're not going off road even though it has the same engine as this. So our two engine options before we make this uh, climb right here, there is a, a two liter inline four cylinder made it to a six speed automatic transmission that gets 164 horses, 151 pound feet of torque. Now our tester here, same as the Sport from last time, is a 1.6 liter turbocharged GDI seven speed. Now let me get the, make sure the wording is correct here seven speed eco shift dual clutch transmission 175 horses 195 pound feet of torque so that's what we're in right now so i like to do this because you have suggested that to me in the past is take some of these climbs at a standstill don't use the, that momentum so driving modes eco sport and normal hmm, let's just go normal here and go uphill so three two one launch control please all right speed control usually my key on this one taking the right approach as well. I don't know about this. It's a soft sand. Oh, crap. That was, is that my, wait, we can still do it. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We can do this. We can do this. We can do it. We can do it. Okay, let me, uh, let me settle down here. Put it in neutral, slide back a little bit. Reverse. Okay, Let's see if I can get a good angle here. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can do this. Not giving up. I think I just need to get a little bit of traction. Okay, I'm going to back up. I think I was just stuck in a little bit of a rut here. If I can get on this ledge. I'm gonna back up a little bit more. <laughs> right. okay. We're okay, we're okay. I'm gonna back up some more. This is a soft, this is a soft section here, that's, that was a problem. Yeah, that's just, that's just some soft sand out there, guys. That's not.
back up one more time. It really is just a matter of where I am. Let's see here. Yeah. Cool thing is the back wheels. Oops. I'm going to coast down backwards here. See what my problem is. And I, and I know it's just that. Yep, yeah, it's just a lot of soft dirt. So we're gonna put it in neutral, kind of cruise back down. I thought I'd take a break from the action and show you a feature as we do a demo on the cargo volume. It's a hands-free smart liftgate option here on the Hyundai. I showed this to you before on the Sport, but in case you haven't seen it and you are interested in the Tucson, this is how it works. The vehicle is locked right now. I'm a fair distance away from it. Now, I've been away for it for about uh, 30, 45 seconds or so. Now, I'm going to keep the key fob on me, put it in my pocket, walk up. The vehicle will start to beep and the liftgate will open on its own. So. If you have your hands full of some groceries, a young one, lights are flashing, and you can't make it to your pockets or hit the button below, it opens up on its own. Again, this is called the hands-free smart liftgate option. Now behind this back row of seats, you're looking at 31 cubic feet of volume, which is up over five cubic feet of volume from the previous model. And you fold those down, which you do from the inside, 61.9 cubic feet of volume. There you go, so a very capable compact crossover. Put some long items in there, and just below here, you have your spare tire and jack kit, just in case you get a flat. And when you wanna leave, push the button up here, which on the limited trim level allows you to push it, walk away, it closes on its own. All right, we are back in action. Uh, a couple things here. We are rolling on 19 inch alloy wheels that comes on the Sport and the Limited. You have 17 on the SE and the Eco trim levels. So now you know what kind of options you have there. We're going to go up another section and then maybe go through some mud puddles just for the fun of it. And then uh, we'll bring on Melissa and we'll talk about our driving experience in this. One of my fun, one of the fun features I like about this car, and we have it as an extra package as part of the ultimate package above uh, the Limited, is this panoramic sunroof, which is beautiful. I mean, what an open space this creates. You can really see it in this camera angle, I'm sure. I love these options. I wish more and more vehicles uh, provided that. Sometimes you'll have a space in the middle and you can still have a dual uh, moon roof or sunscreen or sun moon roof. Uh, I like it just completely wide open, the like you see it here. Now, because we have the all wheel drive, our estimated fuel economy rating is 24 city, 28 highway. If you get the front wheel drive, you'll get a little bit better, and that's at 2530. Now, for us, we've put, let me double check here, I've put 133 miles in the car this week, and I've been averaging about 22, so well below. And a lot of people say, you know, you're a lead foot div, you don't drive very well, and that may be true. And let's see, I've been mostly driving in the city, not a lot of highway, and a lot, not a lot of long stretches of driving in the highway. So maybe it's my fault, and this car has 5,000 miles on it, so it's not a matter of the car's not broken in. All right, I'm gonna go up here, one more incline, let the vehicle do its work with this all-wheel drive system which handled fine. Earlier, I had to back out of that one because the, the ground was just uh, too soft and uh, had to leave. So, all right, out here, let's have some fun and get muddy. Rain's coming down a little bit too. That's good. Yeehaw. Uh-oh. <laughs> get sloppy. Uh-oh, gotta change that camera, I bet. Oh, shoot. This is not good. No, 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 no. I don't want to be stuck in there. That's for sure. Let me get out of this crap. <laughs> Having some flashbacks to an icy pond, but in a muddy situation.
Okay, why am I going out here in a compact crossover that may not be super all-wheel or off-road worthy? Well, just to show you what it is capable of doing. And today, I took it pretty easy. Uh, I'm not doing anything crazy. Uh, there were some steep inclines, but as you can see, unless you have some bigger tires, better conditions, you won't get up some of those steeper things, especially if it's soft uh, with, this, with the, um, the sand. And if it's deep mud like I was just in there, you're probably gonna have some challenges too. But for general off-roading, so you're off the paved path, you're going over some some articulation here. I'll show you over here. I'll see. What, I'll show you what I'm talking about. The vehicle's gonna be fine. I mean, how many of us are really doing anything crazy right now? Even still, so you can see some of this here. See how the car is kind of going back and forth. We're, we're going. We're going some off-roading. It's not like hardcore Jeep Moab stuff. This is just some good old-fashioned dirt roads with a couple of bumps here and there and some mud. But let's be realistic. If you are getting this car, um, how serious are you about utilizing the all-wheel drive system? Well, if you're in the snow and you're you're going, you have a maybe a long drive that's gravelly or dirt muddy road I think it's gonna be fine if you are much more serious you're gonna get a, a Jeep you're gonna get you know something a little more durable for those kind of things or a Subaru which I you know, I would definitely suggest as well either way you gotta test these cars out and see what your lifestyle needs if that car provides it so I'm just going around right now just for some fun See, this is considered off-road technically I know it's not hardcore so settle down, keep those comments polite. Just have fun, man, just have fun. All right, let's roll roll up here and give you one more piece of information before we bring Melissa on. So the beginning MSRP on this 2016 Hyundai Tucson is 22.7 up to 31.3 for the limited. Our tester also has the ultimate package on it. So what you see right here, right over $35,000. Is it off-road capable? Yes, if you're doing some light off-roading like I did today, probably avoid some of that softer, deeper sand and deep mud. Probably not your best bet, go with something different. Um, otherwise, it's a pretty good deal. I like this car. I love what Hyundai has done on the inside. And for more on that, here's me and Melissa driving around in the car, talking about our overall driving impressions and our, our thoughts and impressions on the interior. Take a look. So you don't think this vehicle, the Tucson, has a smooth ride? I don't know, maybe it's a driver error, operator error. <laughs> it's pretty jumpy. And when I was telling you that like a Jeep Wrangler has a stiff ride and you said, well, this does too. I, and I freaked out. What? Well, it's like, I don't know. I don't think it's super comfortable, I guess. You think it is? Yes. Really? This Hyundai, is it smooth? Look at this guy. This guy, he doesn't even, uh, green light. Yeah, it's, that means we can go left. Oh, look at this guy, though. You can't go left either. I don't know. It seems, I guess what I mean is, for the passenger, it's kind of stiff over here. I don't have a lot of, of leg room, for one thing. It's kind of, I feel boxed in. Okay. Boxed in. I know I have boxes behind us because we just went to Costco. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I don't know, someone who's much taller than me, even six foot tall, would have a hard time cramming themselves. Well, we'll use the, use the adjustments over there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, you can go back. Sure. I guess that makes it a little bit better. It's still, like to cross my legs over here, I'm kind of a little bit tight. How many people out there cross their legs in the front passenger seat? besides this one over here. I like to stretch my hips out. Okay. I find this comfortable. I find it smooth, mm -hmm. drives nice, corners okay. I don't feel like there's a lot of body roll with it. It's, it's a nice, comfortable turn. You it, didn't think it has a jumpy ride though? Because I thought for a while that you were driving a manual. I thought it was a manual, honestly. That's how jumpy it was. Because I'm not a good driver doesn't mean the car is not a good ride. No, I'm not saying that you're not a good driver. I'm saying that a couple times, you know, in stop and go traffic, it's been like it kind of leaps forward, you know, a little bit jumpy on the brakes. Maybe the, take. the brakes are kind of tight. See, this is good. This is what you get from the everyman driver. These are her perspective and my perspective. I love it. This is this is what what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. I'd do it more if you paid me. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about the 
dash center stack. I think it's actually a pretty upscale interior. The screen is not driver centric, so it's just like straight on, you know. I think that's kind of helpful for the passenger if the passenger is typing things in like a navigation destination, you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of helpful to not have it driver centric. Um, but it's not uncomfortable for the driver to use either. And it's a cool little touch screen, you know, it's got all kinds of fancy buttons. Yeah. Center stack's clean. One thing I missed because the last vehicle I was in was the CX-5 mm -hmm. and you had a dial down below to turn things yeah. up there. I like that versus having to reach forward and maneuver things. I always want to be able to down, go down here and go between media, navigation, but for me, I got to push the button up here which almost yeah. takes my attention away from the drive. I See, I think it's opposite for me. I know the Mazda you know, brand always has this, those little knobs. I don't really like the little knobs. Mm -hmm. I like the push button and I like the buttons up top because if you are looking down at a stoplight and then, you know, getting ready to, to drive, you're just barely taking your attention away from the road. You know, it's just a quick little glance down. Whereas, you know, you have to put your hand down to use the, the knob. Mm -hmm. I guess it is a preference and, mm -hmm. and if driving this for a full week then it gets a little more comfortable just like I had the CX-3 then CX-5 so both those weeks two weeks straight I had the dial so yeah. maybe that's what my perception is right now is like ah, I gotta do, I'm so used to doing this yeah. so you're right maybe it is the opposite maybe it is it keeps your eyes more this way mm -hmm. if you only have to turn look here yeah I mean I think I think it's everyone's adaptable right, right. Like if you're driving a Mazda it's not very hard to keep your attention just on the screen and your hand down here. You don't have to look at your hand doing what it's doing. Um, but I think it's just you know, get in the car and test it out. It's not. I don't think it's dangerous either way because you know you're not really adjusting mm -hmm. usually while you're driving. I, I don't adjust while I'm driving. I adjust if I'm in a stoplight. Got it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this off-road and review of the 2016 Hyundai Tucson Limited. I'm Dave Erickson here at the Riverside State Park ORV area. Thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We'll see you next time. Adios.